I'm going to be reviewing this 500 watt 52 millimeter spindle today on making stuff. So if you've been following the video series I've been doing on the mostly 3D printed CNC machine, you know I've been waiting for a spindle to arrive in the mail. Well, banggood.com was kind enough to send me a spindle to do a review on. Now, they didn't pay me to do this review, and this is my 100% honest opinion on this spindle. So let's start things out by checking out what comes in the box. So inside the box first, it looks like we have a motor controller and that's what it appears to be. And this motor controller will take 110 to 120 volts input and the output is DC voltage uh, zero to 100 volts. So doesn't look like there's much to it. Uh, this is where the power goes in. This is where the motor hooks up. It looks like they've already put a jumper here for uh, on off and then there's also a potentiometer here and this would control the speed of the motor or the spindle actually so next let's dig down in here a little bit deeper and here we have the spindle and it looks like it's packed pretty well and it has a clamp on it and i'm going to take these bolts here and get them out of the way but here, here's the spindle. It is air-cooled, so it has looks like a, some type of fan or squirrel cage type fan on the top. Then on the bottom, we've got the collet, and then it has some also some mounting holes here on the bottom. So I guess you could use these mounting holes instead of using this bracket here. But uh, first impression is it, it seems to be built pretty well. It's got some pretty good weight to it. It doesn't af appear to be cheaply made. Uh, it does seem to be very well put together. So let's take this bracket off here and let's get things all wired and hooked up and put this thing to the test. So before I hook this up, I just wanted to put it on the scale here and show you guys that uh, this, this has got some good weight to it. It, it feels like it's very well made. So I'm going to put it on my scale and it is 32 ounces, which is right at two pounds, which also translates to 923 grams. So this is, this has got some good weight to it. It feels like it's very well made. It also comes with this bracket and it is uh, machined aluminum. It appears to be, and it weighs 290 grams which is 10 ounces. So uh, this, this seems to be a very well-made part as well. To mount the spindle to the Z-axis on the MPCNC, I'm going to be using these 3D printed brackets that I downloaded from Thingiverse, and I will put a link to this in the description, but it's already got a 52, 52 millimeter cutout and a back that'll mount right up to the z-axis on the MP CNC machine so let me get that part hooked up and here it is all hooked up and I decided before I put a bit in there and do some cutting with it I put a little piece of reflective tape on there for my tachometer let's crank it up and see what kind of speed we can get out of this at max speed So it looks like we're getting almost 11,400 RPMs out of it. I don't know if that's showing up on camera. So yeah, 11,400 RPMs at max speed. One of the things I've noticed about this spindle is how quiet it is, uh, especially compared to like a router or a Dremel tool. So I've got this really unscientific decibel meter here, which uh, is my cell phone. And I'm going to be quiet and we'll just take a reading on the quiet room. So it looks, it's, looks to be about uh, 20 to 21 decibels on the quiet room. 
Now I'm gonna crank this up. Now that's full blast and let's see what the uh, sound reading is on it. So it looks like it wants to hover around 40 decibels. That's not bad at all. This is a really quiet spindle. I've got a bit all loaded in the spindle and ready to go, and I didn't realize this until I went to actually put a bit into the spindle, but it doesn't come with any wrenches. So I had to go and get a 13 and a 17 millimeter wrench out of my toolbox so that I could install the end mill into the collet. Now, also another thing that I noticed is that it only comes with one collet, and it's an ER11 collet, and it comes with the three millimeter insert or call it whatever. I, I don't know the correct terminology, but uh, I just so happen to have some eighth inch end mills and they are 3.175 millimeters and it actually fit into this call it. So that's one thing to keep in mind is if you order one of these, you're going to have to get you a set of collets and I've looked online and you can get an ER11 collet set for around $15 to $20. So if you're going to use anything other than three millimeter end mills or one eighth inch end mills, you're going to have to also get you a collet set to go with this spindle. One of the things I want to do before I start running some G-code on here is I want to get a base temperature reading. So it's 51.4 degrees Fahrenheit. So that gives me my base reading and then I'll come back and I'll measure this after it runs for a while and I've got some g-code loaded in here and it's ready to go and it should take it about half an hour for this to uh, run and then we'll come back and we'll see what the temperature is. All right, so I did let that run at full speed for, it says on the LCD, a total of 28 minutes and seven seconds. So let's do a quick temperature reading here, see what we get. 113 degrees Fahrenheit, which that's not bad at all. I mean, it is warm to the touch, but I mean, it's not overloaded or hot or sitting here smoking because it was straining to do the job. It, it did the job quite well. Now let's take this off of the spoil board and let's see what kind of quality of cut we got. And it looks like it did a pretty good job. All the edges are clean and smooth. The top, you can see a little bit of the milling marks, I guess, going like this, this direction, if you turn it in the light the right way. Now it is a little fuzzy on the sides and also right here and in case you didn't know this is a YouTube play button <laughs> so uh, I think this has more to do with the bit and the plywood that I used if anybody knows uh, what's causing this uh, please leave a comment in the description but uh, this is the first cut I made with the spindle now I did before I hooked the spindle up I made this YouTube play button and I used a Dremel tool. I used the same bit and a Dremel tool and it did the same uh, splintering on the edges. It's got the, f the fuzzy edges and all, but uh, the edge is not smooth and you can really see these milling marks here and uh, that was from the Dremel tool and I was doing a one millimeter depth cut on each pass and that Dremel tool it just sounded like it was all it could do to keep up and make these cuts and this spindle when it did this it didn't even slow down 
Uh, I put the tachometer on it while it was cutting and it doesn't slow down. It doesn't change a, a pitch in the sound. It just keeps on plowing through whatever it's cutting and it does a pretty good job. So all in all, I'm, I'm quite happy with that for it being my, my first cut with that spindle. So what are my conclusions about this spindle? Well, I think it's an awesome deal at $79 and I really don't have any gripes about it at all. It was able to do everything that I threw at it and it didn't overheat and it runs much quieter than a laminate or a trim router. I do have a link to this in the description of the video, so please be sure to go there and check it out. If you like the video, give me that big thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button. And while you're there, ring that bell so you don't miss any upcoming Making Stuff videos. And thanks for watching.